God's Chosen Production, Adewale Dada the Good presents the 10th Alake of Egba Land, Oba Adedotun Aremu Badebo, from childhood to Obership. We be the way that we call my father. People of Egba Land have chosen somebody that they can be proud of. He has been very concerned about the development of a balance. Fantastic. Very nice and generous person. You can see peace. God sent Oba. On inspiring life, Oba Adedoton Aremu Badebo, the tenth Alaki of a land. Supported by Oceanic Bank PLC, Seaman's Royale, Moving Media, 2nd February, Procare Plus Incorporated, Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Augustine Colley James, Ashiwaju and Eriluba Shikmu of Egbaland, Detroit, Michigan, USA. A good king reigns, the people are happy and they rejoice. <music> Egba Kingdom has not been the same since the present Alaki of Egba land, Oba Adedotun Aremu Badebo, Okukeno IV, ascended the throne of his forefathers. Hello and welcome to this special documentary on inspiring life. Oba Adedotun Aremu Badebo, the 10th Alaki of Igba land, from childhood to Obership. In it, we shall get to know more about the present Alaki of Igba land. Place of my birth. of the African drum, home of the great festivals of my ancestors, my ancestors, Africa, my Africa, blessings, blessings from the lips of my fathers. On the hills and in the valleys where Oba Adetotunare Mumbadebo was born, there he was bred and brought up in an independent state. Oba Adetotunare Mumbadebo is proud of Abeokuta. He stands on Uluma Rock and rejoices in the name of Egba land. Oba Adetotunare Mumbadebo, a descendant of Lishabi, Abeokuta, the land of Egbaz. Oba Badibo will not forget thee. 
he will put thee first in his heart as a Nigerian town. Obare Mumbadebo shall rejoice on Ulumorok. He shall boast of this in his heart, that in a famous town, there live the Ebars. The story of Abeokuta, the abode of the Ebars, started with the liberation of the Ebars from the sovereignty and overlordship of the Alafio for your empire, which Egba hitherto belonged to. The liberation took place between 1775 and 1780 under the leadership of Lishabi, a resident of Igbe, but who was born in Itoku. He organized a militant movement under the name Traditional Mutual Aid Society, Egbe Aru. The organization later assumed a military undertone, which saw its name changed to Egbe Olorogun. Members met every 17 days at Ili Olorogun, which served as their meeting place. Lishabi later used this mutual aid assistance to free the Egbars by organizing the simultaneous assassination of the Ajeles or the Ilaris in all Egba townships in 1780 starting from Igbe. In all, more than 600 Ilaris or Ajeles were massacred in one day. Ilaris were the representatives of the Alafio Foyo and the collectors of the tributes paid to the coffers of Alafi from all the territories under the then Oyo Empire. These Ajeles or Ilaris in general behaved like an army of occupation in the places they administered. Their tyrannical rule marked them out as instruments of oppression and suppression of the people. It was this authoritarian rule of Alafi and the reckless lifestyle of his Ilaris in Egba land that threw up Lishabi and his peers who were reserved to bring an end to the evil rule at all costs. The adoption of the universally popular Aro system of cooperation by the Egbe Ologun Arms Barriers Club was the strategy Lishabi used to plot against the Ilaris. At the appointed time and taking their cue from Lishabi who had massacred the Ilaris in his Igbe town, all the other Egba towns rose up and murdered the Ilaris in their midst. As soon as the news reached Metropolitan Oyo, the Oloyo wasted no time in dispatching an army to crush the Egba rebellion. But Lishabi, the visioner, had anticipated their reprisal and had factored it into his plans. The army of vengeance was rooted and the freedom of the Egbas from the yoke of the Alafi was sealed. The time to which this episode in Egba history relates was between 1775 and 1780. Around 1829, Lamodi of Ibe, the Balogun of the Egba, living in Maya's camp in Ibadan, decided that the Egbas should find a way of escape from Maya's bondage. The Egbas had heard about Abeokuta earlier on in their quest for a place with good security to settle in. The sent chief Shobokun, the Baamoku of Ilugun, and others to bring a handful of earth from the proposed site. The Ifa oracle was consulted with this handful of earth and Ifa pronounced that the place was good for settlement. History reveals that the Egbas did not get to Abeokuta at the same time. A handful of Egbalaki, Okiono, and Bagura people arrived in Abeokuta first while others joined them later. Lamodi was killed in an epic battle while trying to prevent his son Oshota from being captured by Maya's army who were pursuing the Egbas, but before he died, he handed over the mantle of leadership of the Egba army to Shudeke. Shudeke in 1830 led the Egba Lake into Abeokuta. Balogun Olunloye, the Balogun Ilugun, led the Baokiono, whilst Oluwale Agbo, Balogun Ojo Bagura, led the Baguras to Abeokuta. 
Siriki Shodeke of Iboro, like Moses in the Bible, finally took the Egbars to Abe Ukuta in 1830. It was revealed that an Itoko chief named Idouli Peru had earlier been living in the settlement. He crossed the Ogun River and settled on a firm land where three hunters, namely Jibulu, Osho, and Olunle, joined him. Unlike Liberu, who erected a house with the assistance of the then Olubara Lafa, the three hunters lodged in some caves inside Oluma Rock. It was they who told the Egba delegates who came to take soil samples about the understone Abiukuta. Later, Adagba and others moved to the rock to join Liberu and the three hunters who had settled there. Adagba was a brave man who had his firm land located very close to Oluma Rock. The settlement was then called Okuadaba, the other name for Abeokuta, while Oluma Rock took its name from its being naturally furnished with apartments. Oluma meaning built by the Lord. Other historians maintained that the meaning of Oluma is Olufibo, meaning God put an end to the hostility against the Abars and their suffering. Abeokuta is also known as Abeolumo. After the demise of Chief Shodeke, Abeokuta had no leader for quite a number of years. The administration of the town was left in the hands of chiefs like Ogumbono, the Balogun of Ikija, the Sabua, Chief Shoboye, the Bashoro, who succeeded Chief Apati, and the chiefs among the Ologboni, Ologun, and Olorogun. The Egbars realized the fact that they were not as united as they had been when Chudeke brought them together. The thought of having an Oba came to them and the idea crystallized. The lot fell on Chief Okukenu Sagua of Ake, the head of Egbao Bonis, and an industrious woodcover. He was installed the Alaki of Abeokuta on August 8, 1854. Oba Okukenu's reign witnessed the introduction of Christianity and the advent of European merchants in Abeokuta. Oba Okuken ruled the Baland between 1854 and 1862. An interregnum of about seven years elapsed between the death of Oba Okukenu and the installation of a new Oba in the person of Oba Ademola I. Oba Ademola I reigned between 1869 and 1877. Oba Oyekon reigned between 1879 and 1881. It was the turn of Oba Luwaji between 1855 and 1889. Oba Oshokalu ruled between 1891 and 1898. Egba became a nation during the reign of Oba Oshokalu. Oba Gbadebo I ruled between 1898 and 1920. Oba Sir Ladapo Ademola II, 1920-1962 Oba Adeshino Badebo II, 1963-1971 The immediate past Alake of Egba land, Oba Dr. Mufolonsho Oyebade Likwede ruled between 1972 and the year 2005. And now... The tenth Alaki of Egbaland.
In Yoruba land, when a new baby is born into a royal family, those who know and appreciate tradition would accord him all the respects a future king deserves. So, it was on 14th September 1943, a baby was born into the family of late Omoba Adesonya Oshalake Badebo, one of the sons of Oba Badebo I, the sixth Alake of Iba land, and Madam Musiliat Badebo, who hailed from Ikopa in Abeokuta. Omoba Michael Adedotun Aremu Badebo was the first son in the family of late Omoba Adesonya or Sholake Badebo. Some observers therefore concluded that it was just a matter of time before the young Prince Adedotun Badebo would ascend the throne of his forefathers. Omoba Michael Adedotun Aremu Badebo and his siblings had a disciplined upbringing. They were not pampered by their parents, but they had tender parental care and guidance in their formative years. In those early years, he had a lot of fun uh, playing football and engaging in other childhood pastimes with his friends in the open space between the family house and Ake Palace. As a young boy, Omobadi Dotung Badebo was enrolled as a pupil at St. Augustine's Roman Catholic Mission RCM School Itesi Abeokuta in January 1949 and passed out in December 1956. After his nursery and primary school education, he had his secondary school education at the famous Baptist Boys High School BBHS Okeguya Abeokuta from January 1957 to December 1962. Uh, Kabesi, His Royal Majesty, our Dr. Ali Dr. Ali Dr. Ali Dr. Ali Dr. Ali Dr. Ali Dr. 1962. Uh, he was one of the best students during uh, his time and then he represented his school in many areas. And his higher school certificate course at the Ibadan Grammar School Ibadan from January 1963 to December 1964. That is something special about our school. Records are always intact no matter the number of years. Available records show that uh, KBC came in 1963 for CJC. And uh, his admission number, according to our records, is 4,026. That is 4,026. His favorite subjects were English language and history, and he was quite active in the literary and debating society. After his higher school certificate course, the new Alake proceeded to the Premier University in Nigeria, University of Ibadan, in 1965, where he successfully graduated and embarked a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1969. To further satisfy his thirsts for education, he successfully undertook a postgraduate diploma course in education at the University of Ibadan from September 1974 to June 1975. He attended the Command and Staff College, Jaji, Nigeria from September 1978 to August 1979 and graduated with flying colors, obtaining the PSC. In December 1969, he was commissioned as a full lieutenant in the Nigerian Army and served meritoriously in these capacities. Officer Instructor, Nigerian Military School, Zaria, February 1970 to July 1971. Adjutant, Nigerian Army School of Education, NASE, Ilori, July 1971 to September 1973. Chief Instructor, October to December 1973. And Senior Instructor, NASE, Ilori, October 1973 to August 1974. Deputy Assistant Adjutant General, Army Headquarters, Education, Lagos, during which he simultaneously acted as Finance Officer, 
September 1975 to August 1978. General Staff Officer, Grade 1, Coordination and Training, Command and Staff College, Jaji, August 1979 to August 1981. Chief Research Officer, Nigerian Army Institute of Education, Lagos, August 1981 to August 1982. Assistant Director of Army Education Headquarters, 1 Mechanized Infantry Division, Kaduna, August 1982 to January 1984. The military career, spanning about 16 years, culminated in a 20-month glorious tint at the Supreme Headquarters, then the seat of the Federal Government of Nigeria, first as Assistant Director, States Administration with responsibility for the six states that constituted the old western region of Nigeria, including the then Bendel State, and finally as Principal Staff Officer, Supreme Headquarters, Durden Barracks from January 1984 to September 1985. During his brilliant military career, he went on study tours to British Joint Staff College, Latima, UK. British Naval Staff College, Greenwich, UK, British Army Staff College, Camberley, and the Royal Air Force Staff College, Bracknell, UK. He won various medals including the National Service Medal, NSM, Defense Service Medal, DSM, and Forces Service Star, FSS, among others. He is a staunch member of BBHS Old Boys Association and was president of 5762 set between 1997 and 2005 when he voluntarily relinquished the position following the approval of his selection as the new Alake of Egbaland. At the University of Ibadan, he was a member of the Tida Hall Executive Council in the 1966-1967 academic year. On the 12th April 1971, he got married to Tokumbo Odujo, now Olori Dr. Mrs. Tokumbo Badibo, daughter of the late Pa J.F. Odunjo Ashiwaju of Ebaland, a renowned author of Yoruba literature works. Oba Michael Adedotun Aremung Badebo Okukeno the Fourth has by dint of hard work achieved notable successes in the highly competitive world of the private sector which has strengthened his background for the exalted royal position of Alake, the paramount ruler of Egba land. He has travelled widely all over the globe on business and religious trips. Oba Michael Aremung Badebo as a boy, indeed, enjoyed his youth. Here is one of his childhood playmates. Uh, we, we've been together for years. During the primary school days, in the evening, we used to play football together on our field, which is very close to their family house. The prank we used to play there. We make sure the father is asleep. We managed to push his father's car out without starting it. Then we we'll take the car around the town for our enjoyment. For the last time we did this, we had problem with the car. We had accident on the battle road. So we have to abandon the car. But this car, as he said, we used to call him Dot 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 then. We cannot leave this car here. Papa will kill us all. So we have to hire one uh, uh, timber lorry to tow the car, but we didn't bring the car near our house. We left it near the local government council. Then everybody ran away. The following day, Baba was looking for the car. He said, ah. we went to the two small and said, ah, where's my car? I brought the car back last night when I went to, uh, when I was on outing. Ah. Nobody could say anything. Later, some of the workers, the Obama was uh, uh, the chief sanitary inspector of the local government. Some of his uh, junior staff said, yeah, Baba, the car is near the council. Who, who, who might have taken this car there? So when Baba got there, he saw we, the, we brushed the car by the side. <laughs> it must be either Dotun or Bola. 
How did the selection of Oba Michael at the Dutton RMO Badebo go? Now we have the responsibility of choosing a Malaga. And um, about two years ago, we were confronted with as many as 11 princes. We were very lucky to have chosen our present Oba. Since his installation, Egbaland has witnessed tremendous progress. As a matter of fact, it is usual whenever you have a battle on the throne to have rapid progress. And on Tuesday, the 3rd of August 2005, the selection as required by the 1963 amended chieftaincy declaration was conducted by open balloting among the 23 kingmakers present. 15 out of the kingmakers voted for Omoba Adedoton Aremu Badebo, while 8 voted in favor of Omoba Adeleke Adedoin Badebo. The other candidates scored nil each. The chairman of Omo Yamaru, the kingmakers, Chief E. Adeyemi Adeboye, immediately announced the results to the news media. The Ogun state government had 21 days to confirm or set aside the kingmakers' appointment. As such, the government in council on the 23rd of August 2005 approved the candidature of Omoba Adedotun Aremubadebo as the 10th Alake of Egba land. Thus, within a period of about six months, the Egbas were presented with Oba Adedotun Aremubadebo Okukeno IV as the 10th Alake of Egba land. According to Egba tradition, on Sunday, August 28, 2005, the Egbalake chiefs sent the Ologun and Olorogun chiefs from the three groups in Egbalake, which are Egbari, Egbaiku, and Egbagbei, to bring the new monarch from his Lagos residence, Oduduawe Ikeja, Lagos, to Ileoboni Toku, Abeokuta. arrived in Leo Boni Toku at about 6.05 p.m. for the commencement of the rites and rituals of the ascension to the throne of the new Alake of Egbaland. On arrival at Ileo Boni Toku, Oluwo Itoku, Chief Olusoji Shodamola, took the Alake elect into the inner chamber of the Oboni house where certain rites and rituals took place. He led him before the Abao Bonis dancing round the Iroko tree in the center of the Oboni house seven times to complete the Oboni rites and rituals. The Alake prostrated three times for the whole of Egba land for the last time in his life, and the Oluwo of Itoku, Chief Olusoji Shodamola, flogged the Alake three times according to tradition before the Oluwo Itoku finally handed him over to the Omo Yamaru, the kingmakers, for the commencement of the traditional rites. The Egba gave seven conditions to the Alaka elect to fulfill before he could be considered as their supreme monarch. The seven conditions are <laughs> That the new Alake must seek for the good, peace, upliftment, and unity of Egba land at all times. The new Alake must cooperate with the other sectional others, recognizing the fact that Alake is the leader and one of the five fundamental rulers in Yoruba land, which are Oni, Alafi, Alake, Awujale, 
and Obar of Benin. The Ogboni in Egba land, that is the Ologbonis, Ologun and Olorogun, Parakoi and Ode, own this town and the throne of the Alake. For this fundamental reason, the new Alake must work hand in hand with them and he must also seek advice from them and take proper care of them. Indiscriminately, the three fundamental religions in Egba land, namely Christianity, Islam and traditional worship belong to him. His sovereignty covers them, but he has the free will to adopt the religion of his choice. The new Alake must admit the customary doings and traditions of the Egba people. The new Alake must not take anybody in the Egba township as his enemy, most importantly, his co-contestants. He must settle the rivalry between them. And the new Oba Alake must not encourage gossips, betrayers, backbiters and slanderers. They should neither be his friend nor should he listen to them. After he had read out the conditions in Yoruba language to the new Oba and obtained a firm promise from him, Chief Edmund Adeyemi Adeboye, the Oluwo Ijeun and Oluwo of Egberland, offered his fervent blessing on Prince Adedotun Aremu Badebo and on Egberland for peace, progress and prosperity during Oba Adedotun Badebo's reign. Part of his response and promise to the seven conditions was his determination to move about to greater heights at all times working for the nation's progress and development. Not only did the Alake elect say he was fully prepared to draw his fellow contestants to his side, he also promised to take proper care of the chiefs and cooperate with them in transforming Egba land into a better city. By Egba tradition, a question and answer session must precede the confinement of the new Alake to Ikwebi a transformatory traditional stopover where the Alake elect will stay for the next three months before his coronation. The Ikbibi is a training school to groom the Alake and to instill in him the do's and don'ts of the land. In Ikbibi, he undergoes some rituals and rigorous training in the customary art of ruling his people preparatory to his installation as the Alake and the paramount ruler of Egba land. Thereafter, the Alake elects in a carnival-like procession with members of his family and admirers trekked from Oboni House at Itoku to the palace square where the baby is situated. The Alake elect, chiefs and the people of Egba land arrived at the Ikwebi at about 8.30 p.m. into the hands of scores of Egba sons and daughters who had been awaiting the arrival of Oba Alake elect. There, the Oluwo Itoku handed him over to the Oluwo Egba, who in turn handed him over to the Oluwo Ake for the Ikwebi rites and rituals to commence in accordance with tradition. At Ikwebi, representatives of the various townships in Egba land paid homage to the Alake elect along with Egba sons and daughters from all over the world. <laughs> The 19th of November 2005 witnessed the colorful and glamorous installation of Oba Adedotun Aremu Badebo as the 10th Alake and Paramount ruler of Egba land. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not
prosperity of Eba land has continued to work stronger during the reign of Oba Adedotun Aremu Badebo. An illustrious son of Eba land, Right Honorable Chief Dimeji Bankole is the Speaker of the Federal House of Representatives of Nigeria. He stood up as a father, as the elect of Eba land, 
to fight for the interests of every single investment. And I was no exception to that. Uh, of course, uh, I'm sure that he, even if I didn't have a personal relationship with him, he would still have um, done what he did, uh, which was uh, very influential and even me becoming speaker of the last one. So I'm entirely grateful to God, to him and to my parents. So, like I said, he would be the one that would call my father. As the head of the administration that handed over the staff of office to Oba Adedotun Aremobadebo, Biogun State Governor Otuba Binda Daniel has this to say. It is not just significance, it is quite uh, uh, historical. Because I happen to have been in Abeokuta in 1972 when the last Oba, the KBC Oba uh, uh, Oyibade Nipwede was uh, Enthroned. I watched it uh, uh, live, but I didn't understand the significance until about three years ago when I went into the archives to also see that coronation. I feel quite happy and excited that several years later, I now happen to be the person who has given the instrument of office to the uh, current uh, KBC, the Alake and Paramount ruler of the Baland. I had known that he was going to become the Alake many, many years ago because the nickname that they have always given him is Obalola. Even when he was, uh, uh, when we didn't know uh, what time is going to happen. And so, uh, once we had the demise of Kabisi, everybody, something tells me that Obalola will be the next Kabisi. And of course, we allow the system to, to play itself. And I'm happy and excited that. Um, the people of Egbaland have chosen uh, somebody who is royal and regal in presentation, somebody that they can be proud of, uh, somebody who commands the respect, uh, somebody who is an icon of, of, of Egba uh, disposition, uh, and somebody who is a thoroughbred uh, personality who also appreciates and understands uh, his rule responsibilities, and somebody who is looking after Egba interests. And we cannot blame him for, uh, for that. Another illustrious son of Egba land, Alaji Sharafa Tujishola, the Taishi of Egba land, is a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I must say that uh, since he ascended the throne of his forefathers, he has been very concerned about the development of Egba land. And, uh, conjunction with the state and federal government, the Egbas, uh, Abekuta and other parts of Egba land has been witnessing a tremendous development and uh, we hope this kind of development will continue. Kabiesi, as a lover of sports, has keen interest in the game of golf. <laughs> Uh, KBAC Oba Adeno Tugbadebo, the Alaki of Ebalan, has declared this tournament okay. open. Since he came onto the throne, uh, Egba has been moving ahead. We've been seeing new things in Ebalan. You cannot describe him in one word. I can only say that if you look at his name, Adedotum Ebadotum. Is very apt, very apt indeed, because new things are going to happen in Egbalan during his reign, and we have we are looking forward to a very long and peaceful reign, full of development, full of achievements in Egbalan, and uh, it behoves on the rest of us to rally around him and give him our cooperation and support. And that's precisely what we have given him. Long may he reign. As the list of Ebba, I am very close to Kabiesi. You see, it appears that uh, Kabiesi of uh, Lailua, Michael, Adito, Karibo, then the fourth. It appears he has prepared himself for the truth. You know, he's, well, two years he has been there, but uh, it's like he's been there for 10 years. You know, he, he brought in innovation in the system, modernizing the traditional system without 
bastardizing tradition, making things comfortable for people like us who are old, you know, without uh, forcing anything on anybody and still getting things done the way they done. And uh, it has been very encouraging. You know, we have done a lot in the, in, the, in the last two years. And I can tell you that uh, he will actually continue to improve the weather. Let me start by thanking the Almighty Allah that he has given us uh, up, uh, I think everybody knows what we call it before, uh, as uh, a paramount ruler. At this point in history, history of Ebola land and history of Nigeria, uh, in him, in the last two years, we have found a very competent, dedicated, conscientious, and very progressive ruler. Uh, who within a very short time has uh, taught virtually every department of life of the Ebola community. He has uh, strengthened the unity of Ebola people, uh, starting from the top. I mean, the other royal fathers have rallied around him. He has always been living as a prince, he has always been living like a prince. That is, he grew up in nobility. He was um, always careful, responsible, and um, he has always exhibited uh, a lot of intelligence. And um, as a young man, you, if you were a servant, you actually know that. Um, he was a king in making, even when he was a very young uh, man. Kabisi is very, very intelligent, extremely patient, and for that two qualities which he has brought into his reign, and I think it has been very good for us because for him, that's all that is so intelligent and extremely patient about issues. The result of what we get is what we get today. Everybody is happy. And we are looking to was a brighter tomorrow. The wife of the current Osho State Governor, who is also an indigenous of Eba land, Chief Mrs. Omolola Oyilola, describes Kabiesi as a wonderful father. What kind of Oba is Oba Adedotun Aremu Badebo? Kabiesi is a God sent Oba to the Eba land for the. As far as today is concerned, he. Uh, it's just like putting a round peg in a very round hole. We are lucky to have uh, picked him as our Oba and he's doing marvelously well. The KBSC Oba, the Dr. Harem, the fourth. My elder brother, my first cousin, uh, has been uh, a great pillar behind the entire family, right as a kid. And I can remember that in 1991, we had the last family meeting in my mother's house at Onipanu. And my mother carried him and put him on her thigh and said to all of us, He's indicating to us that he will become KBSC. And when it's time, nobody can oppose him. He has always been a great pillar behind the entire family. He is a unifying factor. <laughs> Being a very nice and generous person. He does not look at whether you are old or young. He plays with you. And that's where he still holds on. He believes that the youth come around and lift up wherever he is. He is a wonderful father, a good friend, and a fantastic Nigerian. Egba sons and daughters under the umbrella of Egba National Association, USA and Canada, gathered in Philadelphia for their second national convention. Here is the chairman of the association. Abbaadi Boy is, is a true ruler, a true over that uh, 
within my heart should be emulated in every norms. He had made himself a replica of uh, a true Oba in Egbala. I met him just briefly after his coronation uh, when he ascended the throne. And I came home with my vice chairperson, in person of Mr. Engineer Femi Feishita in 2006. KBS didn't know us from Adam, but he welcomed us as the true sons of Egba land. And since then we've been interacting. He had been a very good father, very, very humble. That we came back and gave a very detailed report about a very highly placed Oba within a Berlin that humbled himself that much uh, that we have to give a credit to who credit is worthy given. He's just a wonderful person to me and uh, there's no other way I can relate it to anybody. He's a true born king and is highly gifted. The Metron. Chief Mrs. Bolajoko Shotomi Kuti has this to say. My first encounter with KBC and everyone has always been pleasant, pleasant, pleasant. My first encounter was actually when we had a phone conversation with him. When he was getting ready for his um, coronation and uh, at that time I thought I would be able to see him but then he was such a pleasant person. He puts every one of us at ease and extremely, extremely intelligent. Because when every one of us introduced ourselves, when he comes back, he remembers each person, which state they're from, their name, and what the questions were. So that has been very, very good. And uh, he also happens to be a friend of my brothers, my late brother, Brigadier Shotomi. They were together in the army. So that gives us a, another close uh, encounter which has always been great. And now, the patron, Dr. Augustine Coyote Kole James. Very warm, kind, and um, I think it's a noble king that will see that the Agbalan prosper in a mighty way. He the audience below, I like it. And what I I was really impressed. Uh, we had a little talk since then with the bounce on many times. I think uh, Alaki is very willing. I'm very happy to have met him. And I think I can ride on his coattail to achieve more from the world, especially in the Abala. I shake on this sir for everything. Thank you for meeting my husband. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. I can't wait to meet you and say and greet you in person. Thank you for everything. Oshe Puposa. The development of Egba land on its people is paramount in the mind of Oba Adidotun Aremu Badebo. He's been a wonderful person. I've had one uh, uh, an interaction with, with uh, KBC. Somebody just referred me that I should go and see him in respect of something. And when I got there, I was full of apprehension because this is somebody that I was meeting for the first time that has never met me before. And after the normal greeting and all that and all that, the way he attended to me and the person that um, we met him that day, so frank, honest opinion, things that we thought we had gotten to the last leg, he gave us a brief, a step by step. Um, analysis of what we needed to do and I discovered that he we hadn't done anything at all. The real father, the gem, fantastic, loving, caring, humane and just father. We Egbaland cannot wish for more in the king. He epitomizes Egba land and Egba tradition, Egba custom, everything that is Egba. He epitomizes it. He epitomizes everything that's a father to, to, to people like myself. 
means a lot of things to me and to quite a lot of us. KBC has made quite a number of us part of his household. The palace has become our home. He calls on us to contribute what we can to the growth of Egbaland. And what makes it most interesting to somebody like me is the fact that if you know, and I know, the material, human material, <coughs> that Egbaland is endowed with, and when you know that if you're not careful, you can easily fall out of relevance in, in a population of highly articulate, highly educated uh, people. But it gives, it gives one great joy when you realize that our Father recognizes one for whatever one can contribute to the growth of a balance. And when your Father sees that you have won I mean, he sees you, he recognizes you, he knows your voice, he, he sees you in public and he calls you and he gives you, I mean, he pulls you near to him. We can go to him at any hour of the day. He is willing to talk to you about everything that will improve Agbaland. He's willing to, to, to discuss with you on diverse issues, most paramount of which is that how Agbaland can be moved forward, how their bad customs and traditions can be, remain very relevant, and um, how bad traditions and institutions need to be those that have fallen into, fallen into some state of um, neglect. He, he wants to, to, to lift them up, he wants to renew them, he wants to, to improve on them. He, he, he does a lot, you see, he, he makes me Every waking day, I, I pray to the Almighty God um, to, to, to keep him and make him live long on the throne. His reign in the Balang has brought a lot of progress and development. If you look around, you see so many developmental projects and uh, we're very happy that uh, his aura has brought in a lot of uh, developmental things. I was opportuned to be in one of the occasions recently when he came to declare open uh, a travel agency uh, owned by one of us. And the comments of Babadi Bob made that day, I've said it to many people and I'm repeating it. It will be in my memory till I die and I'm going to pass it down to generation coming behind us. But was said, call me to any commissioner. Be it for only three people, I'll be there to help to commission. This is very, very encouraging from an Oba, a first class Oba in the Bala. He's been a wonderful person. He's uh, perhaps because of his background from Baptist Boys School, which of course uh, remains the pivot of so many good things in uh, Nigeria today. I met Kabeshi personally a couple of weeks ago. When I went there to invite him for the official opening of my uh, out, outfit, travel agency, he obliged me the privilege of coming, and I was quite surprised. I just thought that I told him, and he said, even if it's going to be uh, people opening a shop and the shop is going to employ the service of one or two people, I'll be gladly willing to I'll be part of the opening ceremony. Opa Adedoto Aremu Badebo's reign is the beginning of good things happening to a land. Of course, I happen to have known uh, His Royal Majesty even before he ascended the throne uh, during my sojourn at the Lazine office in Lagos. Uh, I've always known him to be a thorough, hard-working, and of course, as a military officer, you know, a highly disciplined uh, uh, officer even before he retired. And since he retired, he has maintained uh, a high level of discipline. And uh, since he ascended the throne, We've been seeing a lot of changes as far as uh, the Egba land is concerned. Since he became the paramount ruler of Egba land, Egba land, of course, has witnessed tremendous growth. Uh, you can see peace all over Egba land. Since he became the KBC of Egba land, 
we witnessed so many progress here and there, and uh, we know that with this rain, there will be peace, there will be tranquility, and I'm sure there will be harmony among us. As witnessed phenomenal growth in the Ibala, Abukuta in particular. Uh, we say Kamisi has a tremendous touch, and then it is coming on the throne. We have seen a lot of peace in Ebola, and people are happy, and the uh, general well-being of every Ebola man or everybody staying in Ebola is enhanced. Ebola has witnessed progress in the past two years. We thank God today, one of the new son of Ebola has been elected the leader of House of Representatives right in Africa, the number four citizen in this country. This is coming in the lane of Oba Badiwa. Behind every successful man, there must be a woman, and a good woman for that matter. Here is Olori, Dr. Mrs. Tokumbo Badibo. We've been married for 36 years. Um, we've actually known each other for more than 43 years. What has sustained the marriage? God Almighty. He's very good. We get along well. And um, communication, I presume, is very important in the We talk and um, we understand each other. And there's very little opportunity for things to go wrong. He has this gift of. Um, just being nice, of telling people things with hard truth in nice ways. Before he came to the throne, we were just a normal family. We lived in Lagos with our children, and um, well, we, we, we got on the best we could with what we, we had. Um, the difference now is that here, we are in the public field quite a lot of the time. Um, you have to watch what you say, you have to watch what you do. Um, it hasn't changed our lifestyle. We are still very much the same people we are. I see my role as Udori as that of supporting every single thing he does. That is my primary mission here, to gain him support, to make sure that the home front is happy, so that he will be in a better frame of mind, perform his duties, be quite stressful. And um, when things started easing out a bit, I decided I needed to do something to take my mind off certain aspects of being here. And I took on the project of the chapel, refurbishing the old chapel, the 1937 chapel, which was built by Robert Dimona. And I channeled all my efforts and all my resources and all my time. And I roped in a few of my friends who have been very, very nice, very good. Many people from here whom I met here and uh, who have like minds. You know. And uh, we faced the chapel, you can see the results yourself. You know. um, basically, that is the way that I. I don't see any conflict between education and education. Um, as she shared me, yes, and I take great pleasure as soon as that is the only prayer when people pray for Kabis, especially the chiefs. That is the one prayer that I answer. I share in a very loud voice too. Um, of course, some of them will say, I'm Olori, as she shared me. I share as well because I have four sons, they're all grown, two of them are married. And therefore, we have lots of in the palace, and maybe all she shared will be successful. Oba Michael Adedotun Aremu Badibo is blessed with children and grandchildren. But how do the children see their father? <laughs> I did 1,000 and one things. <laughs> but always, as that is a father, is always educating people, calling people, in, bringing them in, and counseling them. So, luckily, he's not uh, as tough. As some of the other military fathers have been but it's still tough, but at least he still counsels you. And it's not just you have a punishment, he punish you, he talk to you, don't do this, don't do this. This is how you are supposed to have things done. That's the kind of father he is. Uh,
ati awon omo aburu won and everybody else o ma toju mi ma toju everybody ka bi se o fe dupe lowo yin gbo gbo nkan te ti se fun mi ni gbo aye mi am o fe dupe lowo yin ko awon nkan te si ma se si ka bi se e se sa am ka bi se elder son ke am a medical practitioner by profession um, I did a lot of wife. Uh, my name is Wani Badebo. Uh, we live together in the UK and I'm a registered nurse. Well, my wife and I see Kabisi as a loving, caring father, a strict disciplinarian, an educationist who imbibes his children and doing well is important in life. That is not based on what your father is, but based on what your achievement is in life, based on hard work and integrity. That's the only way you can never make something in your life. And the most important thing in life is to have not just a good name but a good reputation as well. Come here, sir. Oba ki omo ba. Adi akpelori. Oba ki omo. Akpelese. Ba ki omo ba. Ba ki omo. Olori ashele. Ishe ibi. Oba ki omo. Don't worry. And that all those who are and uh, you may uh, listen to you, give you all the respect and we wish that you live for long. One good turn deserves another. And to whom much is given, much is expected. A Yoruba adage says, it is the eldest masquerade that comes out last from the shrine. Now, how has Kabiesi perceived the people of Igba land and what are his expectations? Two years of my forefathers, I have received so much cooperation from the past, and I too have gone the extra mile to bring smiles to as many faces as God has put in my care. And I promise that in the years to come, I will dedicate myself to even greater service to my people. When you talk about culture, you're talking about what forefathers have done, and they have done well, and it has favored them, and they, you would rather continue with it than change it and look for disaster. We should unite and you know be each other's helper, each other's brother, each other's sister. We should work harder. God has put us in number one position in this country. We should retain that position by dint of hard work. Libya Badeyi, Ejekama Pe, Adiakpelori, Bata Pelese, Irukere Adabere. Olori a shishe bi, ka biesi, ka biesi, ka biesi, oba de dotun are mugba de bo. Igba odun, odun kan wa o. Supported by Oceanic Bank PLC, Siemens Royal, Moving Media, 2nd February, Procare Plus Incorporated, Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Augustine Colley James. Ashiwaju and Eriluba Shikmu of Egbaland, Detroit, Michigan, USA. Africa, my Africa. Place of my birth. Land of the rich rhythms of the African drum. Home of the great festivals of my ancestors. my ancestors. Blessings on the lips of my fathers. Home of the African. Place of the elders' drinks. Kade pa lori oba bebe dumare Kade pa lori oba oba de do tun are mu gbare bo mo wi to Aluwa Kade pa lori oba bebe dumare
Madu, 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 eni ayo, pi eni anu. Oma loka eti odo, mere ndi logun, oma ele re me fa yi ware fa. Oma oli bedu, ababari mi rimi, oma oni bedu babara ndiku. Bi bedu baya, bi kobaro, awe kun lo kon, to hun takete npe ti eni, ka ama ki lo fa jeji. Alake, bade bo, ka ama. Pa jeji, pe ki won ma kpeja ro la ke, pa on ba le kpeja, e je kan on kpeja o, i gan gan na dore, kan on ma kpa o. A la ke, pa mo kuke nou, a bi la ke re mo mo, a bi la ke re mo mo, un ko men jana ju joro. Anwa, a bi la ke re mo mo, a bi la ke re mo mo. Nko menja na ju soro Alake ori egba Oba Ade do tson are mba de bo Oma e foun mi Kere wu jigi Ala ba jase gi Oma ba jali dubu Oma oku kenu Oba rojo joye Oba rojo wakwebi Yare dara Li di ate Oma mata yo, oma li kaitoku, ola ja obin ni, oma feru were, were, were re mo. Li ka ko bi mo kupo, obo gajo. Li ka ko bi mo kupo amo, obo gajo lo mo. Eru kari omo re li konkon, itoku. Ere ke oja, oma file po gun, oma fo gede 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 bote ja. Ogun ko ma ja 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 li le toku Afi wo ma kodo e ku wan lò Oba ak bade bò Fi wò kanè Re yò ma wan Li le je wun I je wun Oma lò ju gbe Oma oro un je Oma oro un fò E yon ko ma kwe kwe ku La ta po li le je wun Ma ni yon ba kwe kwe ku La ta po li le je wun O li tò un koni ba wà Pe le je wun Toma toma I kanè Re e On ro je Li mò e le se ako la ra jeji. Pa mò e ni mò koko. E ni ko ko mò. Pa ba ade dò tu are mò ba de bò. E ba dò tu o. Pa mò ujo ubi ni. O ni kon kare. O ni kon kare tan. Tori yi ko ro gun re. Ma a te se bò ko. E wu shu ma wò. O shò yi bè yi. O shò yi bè yi mè kun. Ako un jò mè lè kun. Kè kun pa.